Hi, this is Daryl Webster here again, just trying to help you get the most out of your OneNote class notebooks. One of the common scenarios you might be coming across is needing to remove a student from your notebook. So we have our class notebook here, and we'll just pick on Elizabeth Swan today, that we might have just simply said, right-click on her notebook or her section group in the notebook, and choose Delete. And when we do that, certainly we take care of Elizabeth's content. She no longer has a notebook in the class but she still has access to the collaboration space and the content library and even this welcome page. So effectively, she still has access to the notebook even if she's being transferred from the class. So I just want to explain a couple of things about the um, sections. First of all, the, the content library section. Uh, a student will have read and view permissions on it. And these permissions are inherited from the whole notebook. Secondly, the collaboration space, the students have contribute permissions, and these are unique permissions. And we'll be looking at where those are assigned in a little while. Of course, the student section, they have the permissions to their own section. These are unique permissions again, because Elizabeth and only the teachers can see this section. So we have a few sections here, and we can see that just removing Elizabeth's section is just only going to take care of a small part of the puzzle. What we're going to do is make use of the OneNote management link which we set up earlier in another blog post and we're going to try and get into the permissions for this notebook. So first of all let's have a look at it from the site perspective. We've created our management link and when we launch this we're going into the notebook looking at the sections and the OneNote uh, pages and adjusting permissions. So our first step, we need to remove the permissions from the collaboration space. I'm going to leave removing Elizabeth's section last because I want to show you something um, later on. We'll remove the collaboration space permissions. So we use this ellipsis button and then we go into the share area and we'll use the shared with view and go into advanced. So yeah, three or four clicks. But it does take us through to this nice granular um, view of permissions for a notebook and for items within a notebook. So what we're seeing here is the collaboration space. It has unique permissions. And this allows the notebook to um, ensure that the rest of the notebook um, students will have read permissions, um, but they can contribute and and read the content within the collaboration space of course. So we're removing Elizabeth Swan and this is simply just selecting the checkbox beside your name and remove user permissions. We get a prompt about do you want to do that, confirming do you want to do that, so we'll click OK and now Elizabeth no longer has permissions to the collaboration space. That's pretty simple. The next section that we're going to work with is the content library. And we'll be doing the same steps, but there'll be just one additional step. So again, the ellipsis menu, share, shared with, and the advanced sharing page. So you'll notice a difference here that the permissions now are um, inherited from further up on the notebook. They're actually inherited from the notebook file itself. So if you were to look at a, a notebook um, within the uh, class notebooks, let's just go and do that quickly. Going into those courses. This is where the permissions are assigned and they've been inherited for the content library. So we'll go back a few steps. What we want to do is use this advanced permissions view to manage the parent. And this will take us back to the advanced permissions view of the notebook. Again, we'll select Elizabeth Swan and remove the user permissions and confirm. So now Elizabeth no longer has access to the content section and the collaboration space. Now let's just have a look at that. I've got Elizabeth's notebook open here. You see up in the top right hand corner that it's Elizabeth that's logged in. Um, we're using OneNote Online to demonstrate this part. 
and if I refresh the screen we should see the collaboration space and the content library removed. Ha! Even more so because we've removed access to the whole notebook we now no longer see the welcome page as well. So as you can see now Elizabeth doesn't have access to the notebook. If she has note, one note connected to this notebook from other devices, she will see the content. It'll essentially be orphaned, um, but she won't receive any changes or, or anything new to that content. So that's Elizabeth's view of the notebook now. Now there is a, um, the final thing that I wanted to take us through, which is removing Elizabeth's section from the notebook. And I'm going to just uh, begin to show you in, in one way and then show you another way. So the common way that you might have done already is within the notebook, right click and delete. And then when we answer yes, then apparently the um, content within that section will be put into the recycle bin. Um, so we'll just answer no to that. And we'll show you the other way which is I think the preferred way to do this because we have a little more control but we're back in our management view of our notebook and we can select the folder that Elizabeth where her content is we'll go up to files and delete the document we can also do this from the ellipsis menu and the second ellipsis menu and delete so I want to show you the effect of deleting the section, Elizabeth's section, from the notebook. Because it feels like OneNote's lying to us a little. We click delete. And are you sure you want to move these sections to the notebook's recycle bin? Yeah, I'm sure about that. So we click yes. Okay, we see that Elizabeth's section has been removed. But if we now go into the history tab, this is where we find the recycling bin for the notebook, there's nothing there. So it appears that Elizabeth's section hasn't been moved to the recycling bin of the notebook. Um, and I do want to show you that it is indeed still available to restore, but it's not from the OneNote notebook application. Let's go back into our classroom and we'll refresh this screen and you will see that the folder for Elizabeth Swan has disappeared. So yes, it's no longer part of the notebook. Those changes have been synchronized from the application. But where has the um, deleted sections landed? This is again why it's um, useful to have your notebook within OneDrive for Business or a class team site. So we go up to our class settings or our, our site settings and down into site contents. And this is where our recycling bin sits. Anything that's deleted from our site, and this includes items from our notebooks. We'll go to recycle bin. And there's Elizabeth sections. So if we did do this um, in error, maybe we deleted our, a student uh, quite by accident, then we can restore those sections. And I'll just talk through some of these. So we do have to restore the, the folder itself, and this becomes the, the notebook within the notebook. We have to restore her sections, of course. And the final one, which is quite important to restore, is the open notebook.12c2. Bit of a mouthful. But this file um, is responsible for helping this notebook to open up and show all the sections as a complete notebook. So we do have to restore that too. So if you do have other files that are sitting in the recycle bin and you want to uh, try and find the section that you've deleted with the students, one other clue is you look at the path and you can see that it's uh, for Elizabeth Swan and here's the name of the notebook right over there. And the other clue, of course, is that the deletion date. So we'll restore what we have deleted and these items will go right back to where the notebook is. And this is how we can restore um, the students uh, notebook back into our, our class notebook. Let's go back into our management view of our notebook and see where that is. So there it is. We've got Elizabeth Swan and she has her notebook back. 
Now, one other thing as I was working through this and, and discovering, okay, the restore process has put the files back, but now what? Let's have a look at Elizabeth's view. So um, we did have to uh, assign her rights back to the um, collaboration space and the content library. Just for the sake of time, I'm just going to just do it to the content library and the notebook. So I'm reversing some of the changes I've made back in advanced or we'll manage the parent as this is the the notebook itself we'll invite Elizabeth back into the notebook we're going to give her contribute permissions no at this level it's going to be read permissions okay and just to ensure that she does have permissions to see the welcome page share this I'll drop in Elizabeth's name here and give her view permissions we don't need to send an email invite no, I think we've got everything so let's have a look back here so we'll just go back to the class site and see the effect of our changes. And as Elizabeth, we go back into the class notebook. And you'll see there that she has access to the welcome page and the content library. But just to illustrate, this is when we're restoring her, her folder and her files, it doesn't necessarily assign the permissions back to her, her notebook within the notebook. So there's still one final step for restoring a student's notebook back into the class notebook. And we'll just go back to our management view of the notebook. So we see Elizabeth's folder. But if we click here, we can see that it's only shared with me, the teacher. So I need to share. And again, I'll go shared with and advanced. So I can have a bit more control. So that's me, the teacher. If I have to share this with any other teacher, then I will need to grant permissions to them. And I, of course, have to grant it back to Elizabeth. And we'll give her contribute permissions. We don't need to send an email. Share. And the effect of that, we'll go back to Elizabeth's notebook. Refresh your notebook. And there's the class notebook with Elizabeth's section again. Elizabeth visits her section. And all the OneNote sections within her notebook are now accessible to her. So that's how you restore a student back into your OneNote class notebook. When you delete a notebook, uh, delete a student section from a notebook it will be sitting in the recycle bin and you'll be able to restore the files in the notebook back to the class notebook but you have to reapply the permissions and again this is another reason why we use the management link for the notebook if we go back to my view of the class notebook and we sync the notebook again we should see Elizabeth's section come back shortly with all her areas of, the, of her notebook as well. So we've looked at how we can remove a student from the notebook and also not just their content but also their access to the collaboration space, the content library and, and basically the whole notebook. We've looked at where we can restore a notebook from and the permissions that we have to add back in to try and um, give that, that person access back to the notebook again. Her, her notebook and also the content and collaboration areas. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you do begin to use the OneNote management link more because we'll be outlining a few more scenarios about what we can do with a class notebook using the management link. And uh, do follow the rest of the series. Thank you very much for watching.